Hey, this is H1. We're going to be running it back with another episode talking about chest knowledge, chest wisdom, and chest understanding. And today we're going to be going over what are traps and plus two, how to use traps in chess. And I know a lot of people had questions on what if my opponent don't do those exact same moves that you show me on the traps? Well, I'm going to go over what is the purpose of doing a trap in chess. So just sit back and relax and just like sway to the music in the background. You know what I mean? And it might not be, you know, music because this is on YouTube. But, you know, it is what it is, bro. It is what it is. <laughs> okay, let's get into it right quick. Yeah. First of all, before we learn how to use opening traps, we're going to have to learn what are opening traps. What are opening traps? Well, an opening trap is a move which tempts the opponent to blunder in the opening okay so this is a opening trap in chess a move which tempts the opponent to blunder in the opening these opening traps um names could be like the russian trap it could be the halazar trap there's a trap in the fried liver attack opening and i know these are like weird <laughs> I know these are weird openings to be named after, but these names came from like past grandmasters or past authors who wrote books about these type of traps or these type of openings. So don't just diss on it just because they sound weird. These traps are played even today and people are still learning. This is still fresh. And I somewhat feel bad for everybody who is under a certain rating because these traps are more prevalent under, I don't know, 1500 rating than it is over um, 2000 level rating. But the traps that are above 2000 rated le <laughs> the 2000 rated levels if I said that right, is more hard to decipher because it could be not material traps, but are like activity traps, development traps, things of that nature. And one other thing that I wanted to go over is that we're going over opening traps in this episode, but there are middle game traps. There are end game traps. For example, in the Roy Lopez, it can go down 25 moves down the line and it could be a trap right on the 26th move. And you will probably never know about it because who goes down that far in an opening uh, trap? <laughs> who goes down that far in a variation? And so opening traps are very prevalent and everybody should learn how to use them. And we'll be talking about that in this next seg uh, in this next segment. How to use opening traps in chess. First things first, let's go over the first thing. There is a difference. Oh, crap. <laughs> there is a difference. <laughs> don't mind my bad writing. Everybody who's watching on YouTube <laughs> or TikTok, I don't know. Between good traps in bad traps in bad traps what do i mean by that that there are differences between a good trap and a bad trap for example if um if you put a trap in a chess engine and then the move before the trap was initiated it, it, the chess engine is like nah that's a horrible move and you're like negative three or negative 1.5 already or the, whatever side vice versa whatever you're playing the trap on then that's a bad trap if it's going against you to just initiate the trap you shouldn't have to play a bad move just to initiate a trap there are better uh, traps where you can play a good move there's um there's a move that I can play in the Catalan that initiates a trap, but it goes along with a variation that I that I want to play in the first place. So, yeah, that there are differences between good opening traps and bad opening traps. And you're going to have to figure that out in the openings that you are playing. And the second thing I want to go over is learn traps. I mean, this can be a drinking game. How many times I'm going to say the word traps, but learn traps in opening drinking milk <laughs> drinking milk and juice <laughs> learn traps in openings you play <laughs> gotta have your bones strong for yourself 
and your opponent. I know this can be pretty difficult to do because there are lots of traps to learn, but this is actually pretty simple if you play an opening that has less traps, like for all my D4 players out there, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, for all you E4 players out there that want to play the King's Gambit and what what other what other gambits? We got the Vienna Gambit, the Goring Gambit, um, the regular Gucci Go Piano, the Italian game. You're going to have to learn different traps in those openings for yourself and for your opponent. And you have to learn it for your opponent because you're going to have to memorize how to defend against that trap. Because just imagine if they play a bad one, right? They play a bad opening trap. You can already have a winning initiative after they initiate that trap. You could be like, oh, snap, I know how to play against this. And then you do that move and you're like, dang, you're already lost. And I know how to convert this into a win afterwards. And you can get... You get a couple wins from that, especially online or in real tournaments. That makes your life a whole lot easier in the long run. So learning traps uh, for your opponent and for yourself is it's just a way easier experience and learning good traps too. third thing. Last thing. And I'm going to pull this chair up because I'm lazy. <laughs> OK, third thing you still. And this is the thing that people don't understand. You still have to, <laughs> what's that, my voice just cry? You still have to learn opening principles. So that just goes to, uh, that just goes on what I was talking about in the beginning when we did the intro. Most people have like, dang, that chair just came out, <laughs> chair is running away from me. But most people uh, question, oh, snap, why should I learn a trap? Why should I learn all these opening moves if my opponent isn't going to play those exact same moves? Well, if your opponent doesn't play those exact moves, your whole plan shouldn't be surrounded on an exact trap. That just gives you an idea of what um, positions you're trying to achieve, especially in openings, too. So... You have to learn opening principles. You have to learn how to control the center, how to gain more space, how to gain more time, castle your king, put your rooks on open files, put your queen in, in the best position to be utilized, uh, look at your pawn breaks. You have to know these other things to pile onto the traps. It's not traps first and then pile on these other opening principles. No, that's not how you play chess. It's a lot more complicated and a lot more intensive. And until you get over this trap dilemma, because um, you low ELO rated players are going to be going through all these traps like the, the Russian game trap, the Halazar trap, the Danish gambit trap. You're going to have to learn all this crap. And once you learn it, you're going to become a better player. And as you get better, you're not going to see these traps anymore because everybody's just going to assume, oh, I already I already know it. I already play it. Like, hey, tell, tell me in the comments or every, everybody who wants to message me. Tell me the last time you seen the four move checkmate after you passed a rating 1600 or 1500 or ever. I would say even f maybe 1400. I still seen it when I was 1300 uh, ELO rating, especially online, but maybe over 1400. What was the last time you seen the fool's mate? Uh, I know the fool's mate is kind of scarce, but the, uh, especially the four move checkmate scholars mate uh, over that certain rating level. So that's what I'm talking about. As you become a better player, you, you're not going to have to remember or learn these traps anymore. So just follow my lead of these three principles. Uh, the first one, there is a difference between good traps and bad traps. Remember that. Rewind, rewind the tape if it was um, confusing because, you know, this this episode will always be here. The second thing is learn traps and openings you play for yourself in for your opponent. So there are, you can have some fun too. Just make sure that it's an awesome trap. Don't make, don't, don't be playing boozy traps. That's, that's the thing. Don't be playing stupid trash traps. That's what I don't want you to play. If you're doing that and the chess engine is already against you, they're like, dude, why are you playing that? Then you're playing a bad trap. Play better ones. And then 
The third thing is you still have to learn opening principles. The trap shouldn't be plan A and then you don't have plan B, plan C, plan D. I'm not going to go through the whole alphabet, but you, you should have plans all the way to Z, all the way to whatever letter ends the alphabet. OK, and it should be Z because I, I went through kindergarten. I go through the Coco Melon songs with my daughter. We 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 Gucci over here. We're good. <laughs> All right. So hopefully this helps um, some players with opening traps. And let's move on to the closing segment. Well, 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 I'm glad that you finished it. This was a, a little bit different. And yes, I know since I'm doing video, I should be looking at the camera, but I felt a little bit more comfortable just not looking at the camera right now. So I'm sorry. <laughs> But to everybody who is just listening, I appreciate every single one of you. Please follow um, if you haven't yet to stay notified on the podcast episodes. I appreciate every single one of you who have sticked with me. Like I've been doing this podcast for more than three years now. I have like 60 episodes. I I've been doing this. Right. I got all this knowledge and all this chest wisdom and stuff. And I'm, I'm like, what? Where are y'all at? <laughs> Where's all these people at? But y'all been there and I. <sighs> I know it's been a struggle. I've been trying to speak better. I've been trying to put out the so's and the now's and the get out the us and the all's out of my speech. And it's just going to take a while until I become an influential speaker in um, a chess player, just like Yasser Sarawan. I want to teach like him someday or Maurice Ashley, either one of those players I would like to teach. Um, I would like to teach like, but hey, it is what it is. I just hope that each one of you have a good day and thank you for listening. I appreciate every single one of you and thank you for choosing this episode, this podcast. Peace. <laughs>